Hello everyone, this is Mumbo here, welcome back, and today we are back on the Hermitcraft server. It is episode 10, and we're currently over here in the slime farm, ready to start recording another video. Now it is bright and early on a Friday morning, if my voice sounds a little bit different, that is my low frequency manly morning voice going on there, because I'm recording this video early, and I don't generally do that, but I have had such a busy week this week. A seriously, seriously busy week. It's been absolutely crazy. I don't know what's been going on, but you know where you have one of those weeks where you feel like everyone knows that you're busy and they just feel like making it worse? I've got personal statements to do. I've got loads of coursework deadlines. I've got loads of homework to do, which for some reason has all been set recently. I don't often get homework, but this week... This week, times have changed. It seems like all of my teachers have suddenly jumped on to giving loads of homework to the students. So I've got all of that to do. Obviously, I've had all the YouTube stuff to do. And on top of all of this, I have bought a kitten. I've bought a kitten, guys. I have purchased a kitten. I'm going to be picking him up tonight at 4.30 p.m. No later, because I am so excited. I'm so excited for this little guy. I went to see him on Wednesday. That is why there wasn't a Wednesday live stream. He's a little Bengal cat. I'm calling him Benji, and he is so sweet. He is just one of the sweetest little cats I've ever seen. He looks like a little leopard, and I am over the moon. I cannot wait. I'm, I'm literally shaking in my boots with excitement. For those of you who don't know, I have actually owned a cat in the past. I had a cat, but sadly, he did pass away last year. His name was Nugget, and he was really sweet. I had him for around about 16 years since I was probably about two years old. Because here's the thing. My mum asked me when we bought him, what do you want to name the cat? And, of course, my little two-year-old brain flipped out and then just went, Favourite food? What's your favourite food? Chicken nuggets. Right, the cat is called Nugget. And it's stuck. And it was a cool name. Everyone loved the name Nugget. But sadly, yeah, he passed away last year, which was really sad. And I wasn't really thinking about getting another cat because, obviously, I missed him. And they do cost quite a bit of money. But I decided to take the plunge. And now Benji is going to be coming home. For those of you who follow me on Twitter and Instagram, be warned. There are going to be cat pictures inbound, and plenty of them. One thing that I do want to say really quickly is a massive, massive thank you to Exuma for building this slime farm on the server. I was considering building a slime farm, but then I decided against it because whenever I try and build slime farms, I always do it wrong, or I don't do it particularly correctly. But this thing is absolutely huge. He has clearly put a lot of time and effort into it. As you can see, it is a massive cleared out area, and we've got loads of levels. Obviously, it's not automated, and it doesn't have any crazy systems for killing the slimes. It's just a manual thing where you punch them to death, but it really does do the job. It is absolutely brilliant. If we take a look in my inventory right now, I've been here for what? Around about five minutes, and as you can see, I've got over two stacks of slime balls which means that we can make plenty of slime box and also make plenty of sticky pistons because sticky pistons are something that I haven't had access to or at least not very many of them for these past few episodes and it's been quite tough to do any redstone contraptions because I have to work around the fact that we don't actually have much slime on the server but now that we do I am pretty much unlimited. I've got all the quartz, I've got all of the redstone, and now I have all of the slime balls. We are going to be able to do some crazy redstone contraptions, and that is all going to be starting off in today's episode, because we are going to be doing some redstone work over at the Redstone Consultancy, which is all going to be very exciting, so I think what I'm going to do is continue killing these guys for a little bit more, so we can gather up some more slime balls, and then I'll head over there, and I'll catch you guys in a little bit. One thing that I do think is worth mentioning is the fact that I've now changed the entrance to my balloon. So whereas beforehand it was ladders that actually have a hitbox, we now have vines which have a much smaller hitbox and it means that we don't hit our head on the way into the balloon, which is just the best. I used to spend maybe two or three attempts every time I tried to get into my hot air balloon. I used to just pop up, hit my head, pop up, hit my head, and then if I was lucky on the third time, I'd be able to get in. But there is no more of that now. I can get in straight away first time and it's absolutely lovely. So the plan for today's episode is we're going to be building a redstone laboratory underneath the new redstone consultancy that we have built in Hermit Hills. Now if you missed the previous episode of Hermitcraft, you're probably a little bit confused right now, but this is the redstone consultancy, it's where hermits can come to give me redstone suggestions or things that those hermits want building, and then I head over with my redstone skills and knowledge, and I build it for them, and then they pay me. Generally speaking, they don't, just because I enjoy doing the redstone builds, and it gives me something cool to do in the videos, which is always good fun. So here is the build and it's a modern looking thing it was designed around the Apple store in New York now I don't particularly use Apple products that much but I have to admit 
The shop that they have in New York is incredibly impressive. It's just a big glass box above the ground, and then you go down a little spiral staircase into the main shop front. It really was very impressive. I haven't done the best job at recreating it in Minecraft, but I feel like this place looks really cool. But anyway, if we head down here, you can see we have got the little redstone consultancy area. And out the back here, I have cleared out a little area because we are going to be building a redstone torch key so that we can secretly drop down into the redstone laboratory. So anyway, what I'm going to do is I will do this little bit on camera just because it's quite easy and you should be able to tell what I'm doing. So first off, we need this sticky piston here and we need the wall block on that one. Then we need the redstone torch underneath with the redstone dust, but I'm not going to place that down just yet because that will cause a redstone clock. So we want to place a repeater here and we'll set it to three ticks and then that will be running up into a block with redstone dust on the top and then a block right there. That is pretty much the entire redstone torch key done. So if we place down this redstone dust, you'll see that the piston extends, and then whenever we place a redstone torch on the front of this block, you can see we get an output through that redstone dust out the back. It's perfect. It works, and that's a done deal. We have got ourselves a redstone torch key now, so what we can do is we can chuck in all of these blocks, and that is the redstone torch key done. So that is going to be activating our hidden staircase that is going to be going in here. When we place down that redstone torch, it will be removed. We'll get ourselves a redstone output, and then the staircase will open up. Lovely stuff. So the design that we're going to be using for the hidden staircase is the one that you can see in front of me. And some of you might recognize this because I did a tutorial on it around about three, maybe even four months ago. I don't know. I lose track of time really easily. It's probably been about six months and that's going to worry me a bit. But this is it. And it is probably one of my favorite redstone creations I have done because it is so compact and works so perfectly. Look, you can put two of them next to each other to give a two wide design. And also, it is very, very fast and easy to build. It doesn't use that many resources, but it's only three blocks wide and only what, four blocks down? That is crazy. I can't believe I managed to do that. I sometimes look at this redstone and I don't even understand how some of it works. It really is quite impressive. So I will put a link to that video down in the description if you do want to check it out. But now it is time to build this little thing on the Hermitcraft server. Sometimes I start to think maybe builds are a bit too compact because I am I'm currently stuck in my own redstone Oh brill. I've managed to free myself from the little redstone labyrinth And I do believe that our little hidden staircase system is now up and running So if we flick this lever right here, we should see that we get ourselves a nice staircase that goes right the way down there I'll take out these blocks and I will replace them with half slabs That'll be half slab there and a half slab there and this will continue on downwards and that will take us towards our redstone laboratory that we are going to be building underneath the Hermit's Hills so that we can construct maybe some evil things or perhaps just some perfectly useful things. I don't really know what I want to do with it yet. I've just always liked the idea of having a secret lab. But anyway, here is the hidden staircase and it works like a charm. And it was actually very, very easy to build apart from the fact that I kept getting myself stuck because as I mentioned earlier, the redstone for this build is so compact. There is basically no air blocks in any of it, and I'm very impressed with it. I'm still impressed with it, and I did just take a look at when it was uploaded. It was uploaded five months ago, so how time flies. I remember recording that video. I remember building it. How strange. I just hooked up the redstone torch key to a T flip-flop, which is now hooked up to the hidden staircase system. So let's give this a quick tester. We chuck down the redstone torch, and oh, it has closed up, which is looking good. And then we place down the other redstone torch, and it looks like it has opened. So that is everything working perfectly fine, which is good. That doesn't often happen, especially when you're doing redstone on servers. So this is good news. Now I'll just fill in all of these blocks here so we can cover up all of that redstone because we don't want to be seeing that. That means it's not particularly hidden. So there we go. If we just chuck down our redstone torch once again, it will be completely flat with a floor. No one will be able to tell it's there, but if we place down the redstone torch, that will open up the entrance to our secret laboratory. Oh, I'm so excited to build this. So it is now time to mine out the area ready to make way for the laboratory that we're going to be building down here. It's not going to be particularly massive. It's not going to be a giant laboratory. For example, the one that we did in the Redstone Let's Build series, that was huge. We're not going to be creating anything like that. But it's just going to be a small little room in which we can do a little bit of redstone testing. But of course, the area needs to be cleared out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Efficiency 5 Diamond Pickaxe. You're not good enough for me. And I think I'm going to do a little bit of a montage or a time-lapse type thing. Because I am yet to use any funky music in today's episode. You're probably missing out on all that sort of thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a montage of me clearing out this area. It will be coming up on the screen right about now.
there we go. That area has now been cleared and it's considerably bigger than the one that I was originally planning on doing simply because I thought I would take away all of the blocks so that we can easily place the floor in and all of the blocks in the roof so that we can easily put the ceiling in. Now, here's the thing. This isn't how tall it's going to be. I wish it was because that is a pretty big room and it would look really very cool. But actually the ceiling is going to be a little bit smaller than that. It's going to be around about this level here. It's probably going to be upside down half slabs because above that we're actually going to be having a little bit of redstone. We're probably going to do a redstone lighting system and that will be good fun because of course this is a redstone laboratory and I want to try and use redstone as much as possible inside the build and I haven't actually done a redstone lighting system in survival mode for a very, very long time, so I think that'll be a cool little project to work on. But before we do that, we actually have to build the room itself. Now, I don't actually have a design for this, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hop into my testing world, and I'm going to just chuck some blocks together, see what I can create. Hopefully it looks good. I'm going to go for like a dark and dingy style, so it's going to be using maybe some of this andesite stuff. Might use a little bit of cobblestone, maybe some redstone blocks, maybe even some nether brick. We'll have to wait and see. As you can see, I've built myself a little IKEA type showroom. We don't have the entire build in here just because I thought that would be a bit silly and we can get a perfectly good taster from this little thing here. And the first impressions, more than likely, are that it is very grey indeed. But that's sort of the point. Like I mentioned earlier, we are trying to build a dark, dingy and evil looking laboratory. I'm not going to go around using really bright blocks. The only problem that I had with Hermitcraft Series 2, the builds that I was doing, was that whatever build I did, I would generally use stone bricks, which made it look a little bit depressing. It was all very dark, and none of it looked particularly happy, which was a problem because whatever build I did, even if that build was meant to be happy, it always ended up looking dark and slightly gothic and things like that, which wasn't ideal. Now, the whole point, the whole point of the build that I'm doing in today's episode is that it's meant to look evil, it's meant to look dark, it's meant to look gothic, thick and it's meant to look not very nice so I think I can get away with using a few grey blocks and I'd say it actually looks quite cool we've got the redstone blocks in there as well they are pretty vibrant they stand out nicely against all the blocks that I'm using as you can see we've got the redstone lamps which means we're not going to be doing the lighting system just because I was thinking about it and it seems a bit silly because once we leave the room it will turn out all the lights and then loads of mobs will spawn they'll probably destroy all of my redstone creations and that doesn't seem like a very good time to me. So I think we're going to have constant lighting. We might end up doing something else in the ceiling anyway because we have got plenty of space to play with up there. But now I guess, I suppose, I'm going to have to hop back onto the Hermitcraft server. And we're going to need to start gathering up some of these nether bricks because I don't actually have any of those. Due to the way that I've designed this thing, we are now having to increase the size of our area by one block on every side. So that is one block this way, one block that way, and I suppose two blocks this way so that we don't go back into our tunnel. But then we will be good to go and ready to start constructing this build. So we'll have to hop off into the nether and start gathering up some glowstone and also a little bit of nether brick. Oh, I'm getting nervous already. I'm just doing a little bit of a silk touch pickaxe repair, as you can see that is my silk touch pick and from doing all of the nether quartz mining the other day, it really did take a bit of a beating but anyway, that is that done so we now have that fully repaired but I thought I'd quickly show you that I now have Depth Strider 3 on my boots, as you can see right here. These things are absolutely amazing. We've got Fire Protection, Unbreaking 3, Feather Falling and Depth Strider and as you can see, look, I turn into a boat! I'm so fast in the water! And I mentioned this in the live stream the other day, I feel like David Hasselhoff in the Spongebob movie, you know when he's in the sea and he's just going along like a speedboat? That is what I feel like right now. These things are amazing. It's one of the best enchantments you can get on boots. Right, let's have it. I'm going to take you down. You are so dead. No, you're not. You're clearly, you clear. Oh, yes, I killed him. I got him. Did you guys see that? Nether exploration has now been completed and as you can see in my inventory I got myself some netherrack so that I can smelt that into the nether bricks so that we can have those nice nether bricks going around the sides and also I managed to get myself 17 glowstone blocks. Now that doesn't sound like that many but we're getting towards that stage on a server where all of the nearby glowstone has been taken so you're having to go slightly further out to go and get it and it's starting to get a little bit scary. Uh, I hate the nether. I really do hate the nether. I hate having to get things from the nether, but sometimes it's necessary, and I really do think those redstone lamps look cool going around the side, so I thought it was worth the risk, and I've managed to do it. But anyway, what I'm going to do now is I have to smelt up all of this nether rack here into the nether bricks so that we can start placing them down. I'll also start working on the room, so I'll give you a progress update in a couple of seconds. So I'm around about halfway through now, and it is looking good. I'm fairly happy with how it's looking right now. I do have a few concerns, though. First off... 
it is looking very grey, which I knew was going to be a bit of an issue with me because now I've suddenly changed my mindset and I really don't like grey builds and this might cause a bit of a problem, but also I seem to be running out of andesite quite quickly, which is also quite worrying because andesite, although it's not particularly hard to get, it's not like stone where you can just walk up to a mountain and mine it for a bit and then gather up everything that you need. We are going to need a large quantity of andesite and if we do run out, then it's going to take quite a long time to gather that back up, which means we might not be able to finish up the project on time, which will be a bit of a shame. But anyway, I'm going to keep placing these blocks and we'll see what we can create. The walls are now in place and everything is looking pretty good. I mean, it's not the sort of room that I personally would want to spend my time in because obviously it looks quite evil, quite dark, quite dingy and dungeony. But because we are going for that sort of look, I suppose we are achieving the desired effect, which is absolutely perfect. All of the blocks are coming together nicely. I really like the combinations. I'm not going to use it particularly often because, as mentioned many times, I'm going to try and make my builds a little bit happier, a little bit brighter, and I'm probably not going to be doing things like this for any form of base. But I definitely like the combination of blocks that we have going on. I don't know why, just something about these redstone blocks, and then we've got the redstone lamps, and then the stone half slabs, the andesite, and also the use of cobblestone. I quite like using cobblestone, and cobblestone walls are actually something that I don't use particularly often, and they really do look quite good in pretty much any build that you do. If you chuck in a cobblestone wall here or there, it's always going to be looking good. Sort of. Never take building advice from me, because it's never particularly good. I have seriously underestimated how much nether brick we're going to need for this one. That was all of the netherrack that I had. I smelted it all up, I turned it all into the half slabs, and we got a disappointingly small amount. I think it was just over a stack, which hasn't made it all the way around the room. So we have to gather up some more netherrack to do this little bit, and of course, all of the stuff going around the ceiling. Now, thankfully, I haven't used it too much in this build because I was planning on doing most of it out of nether brick, but that really would have caused some serious problems as I don't think I would have been able to do it. So what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to pop back into the nether. We're gonna have to gather up some more resources. Oh, I hate doing this. Pretty much all of the roof is in now. It is mostly just stone slabs at the minute because I'm waiting on these nether bricks to smelt up, but I am a little bit concerned. I'm a tiny, tiny bit concerned because it is just a big slab. It's just a big area of not a whole lot happening. The walls aren't so bad because there's stuff happening and the floor, you never really look at the floor anyway, but the ceiling, I feel like we need to do some extra stuff with it. It might just be because our little trim is missing from the edges, maybe that might be why, but we'll have to wait and see on that one. I guess I'll get all of this in place and then I'll take a look at it after that and decide what I want to do. But as you can see, I have altered the design just a tiny little bit. The ceiling is actually one half slab higher than it was beforehand. And now we have these nether bricks. They're sort of offset, which I think could look quite good. I'll have to wait and see, but I think all of the stuff should be smelted up by now. So I'm going to head over to my furnaces, pick up all the kits and then start building again. So there we have it ladies and gentlemen, the evil redstone laboratory that we have built underneath my redstone consultancy is now all complete. I have taken the screenshot thumbnail photo as you can see right there because this is it and I'm actually quite happy with the end product. I was a little bit concerned halfway through that it was going to be too grey. Now when I say that, I mean the fact that it is meant to be grey. I've said that many times, it's meant to be grey but I don't want it to be overwhelmingly grey. The only thing that I am a bit concerned about is the ceiling and I know I mentioned this in the cut beforehand but I do think I do need to do a few things with this perhaps add in a little bit of detail or add in some other block types in the middle there just some nice little features that will draw the eyes to it a little bit more because at the minute it is just one big open area of one color which might not look particularly good I don't know let me know what you think to that down in the comment section but anyway ladies and gentlemen I am all out of time for today's episode. I've spent a lot of time recording this one, but I hope that you found it enjoyable. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button, and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.